Welcome back to Fluffbox. I'm Lyndon and joined today by George Acosta. George, how are you, mate? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Looking forward to to this uh, interview. Yeah. So as usual, I want to go right back to the start. How did you initially get into boxing? Yeah. So uh, I started boxing when I was nine years old. I went to go visit family in Mexico. Uh, my parents are from uh, Los Mochis, Sinaloa. And I went to go uh, visit family. And at the time, one of my family members was a professional boxer. And leading up to that point, I played every sport growing up. You know, I played soccer, baseball, uh, basketball, karate, all that <laughs> stuff. I played every sport. Uh, but I went to go visit. And he's like, hey, do you want to go to the gym with me? And I said, sure, why not? And I went to the gym. And, you know, it was it was an old gym moldy walls it <laughs> smelled gross um but for some reason it, it, it caught my attention i put the gloves on hit the heavy bag i worked the mitts with the coach there and i fell in love with it instantly so i i came back you know i came back to the states i told my parents hey uh i want to join boxing and immediately the next day i joined a local boxing gym well it was part of the sheriff department it was an after school program mm-hmm. um and they had a they had a boxing program there, so I joined and I was there for many years, and yeah, that was the start of that was the start of my boxing boxing journey. So that was the start of your journey. But you're obviously you're a pro now. But how was the amateurs for you? Like, did you enjoy the experience? Yeah, actually, you know what? I wasn't as um, active as an amateur. Um, I mean, I had I had so I started boxing at nine. I had my first exhib. I had multiple exhibition matches when I was around ten, mm-hmm. and then I had my first official amateur belt when I was eleven. Uh, but I wasn't as active as an amateur in comparison to to guys that um, that were around my age group and and guys that I grew up with. You know, most of them end up having you know over eighty, ninety, over a hundred fights. I had roughly sixty fights, give or take, as an amateur. Um, but, uh, it was good. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was a great, great learning experience. I went to national tournaments, um, won a bunch of regionals, state, local tournaments and shows, um, traveled to multiple states for, for, for national tournaments. And, um, it, it was, it was good. It was a good experience. I did amateur up until I want to say, I think I was 17 or 18. And then mm-hmm. I took a little break from boxing. Um, and yeah, now I'm a professional fighter. I was reading earlier, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that you fought um, Edgar Belanger in the amateurs. What was that like? Yeah, yeah actually, I fought I fought Edgar uh, twice. The first time I fought him was at the Silver Gloves in, was it Kansas City? I think it was Kansas City, Missouri. Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I beat him there, and I think that was for the semifinals and then four months later we faced each other again at the junior olympics in alabama uh where we had a tiebreaker tiebreaker score um and he ended up winning uh, and he ended up going to he ended up representing the u.s in in russia i think it's called the velas cup i'm not sure Mm -hmm. but uh it, it was good it was good you know i ended up you know i got i after our first match, you know, we, we, we got a lot of respect for each other and yeah. I got, to, I got to know his, his family and, and stuff a bit. So yeah, it was cool. But fast forward, you're pro now, you're 13 and one, but I just wondered what was that pro debut like? Because you only get it once. What was it like for you? Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, I don't experience anxiety or, or any, anything like that. But when I describe my feeling to people, they say I had a panic attack. Yeah. So, yeah, before, you know, before my, before my professional debut, I, um, I tried taking a, I tried, so I weighed in, everything was cool. I felt confident. I had good training camp. Uh, I knew what I was getting into. But then the day of the fight, I tried a couple hours before. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna close my eyes, try to shut off my mind a little bit because I kept you know, overthinking. I'm going to shut off my eyes. So I tried taking a nap uh, during the day. And then I don't know what happened. I started 
overthinking. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm going to go in the ring. I'm going to go with those little gloves. I'm going to fight someone else. Someone's going to try to kill me. And it's like, like all everything was going in my head. And I just had the feeling of, you know, that feeling when you're on a roller coaster and right at the bottom or right as it's dropping, you get the you know, you know, feeling. Well, I would get that every like two minutes. I would get that feeling when I was laying down, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know exactly what it was. Maybe it's a panic attack or I had anxiety that kicked in. Um, but I dealt with that right before, uh, probably a few hours before the fight. But then once I got to the venue and I was in the locker room, I'm like, you know what? There's nothing different. Like I've done this before many times, I'm amateur, um, you know, I, I've sparred thousands of rounds. Um, so it's like, it's, it's the only thing that's different is going to be in front of a, a, a crowd, you know, people are going to be cheering. Uh, some small differences, you know, no headgear, smaller gloves. Uh, there's going to be a camera, multiple cameras on your face. Uh, but over time, you, you kind of get comfortable and, and you learn to you learn to deal with those outside pressures. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, that for my pro debut was it, it was it was great. You know, I came out, I felt strong. I think I dropped him in the second round, I think. Uh, but we ended up going to ended up going to a decision, and it was a big relief after that. I'm like, okay, cool, like, all right, I I, I can do this because it it was a lot of question marks in in my mind, you know, um, because I did take a break from boxing after amateur. Oh. I think I did. Uh, I took like oh, I want to say like a two year break after after the amateurs, and then I'm like, you know what? My coach called me. We were both in the same same headspace, and we're like. Hey, it's time for us to go back in the gym and yeah and then from there i made that pro debut i answered a co- couple questions like do i really want to do this and and the answer was yes but like you say you answered those questions and fast forward to now you've got your 15th pro fight this week how's camp yeah. gone for that 15th fight yeah um you know camp camp has been great um i i never really get out of the gym um i'm, I'm always staying in the gym i just you know, I, I feel like if I'm not in the gym, I'm not myself. Yeah. Um, and if I can't get to the gym, I have to do something else, you know, either go to a local gym or go for a run or, or do something. So I'm always, I'm always in, in, in good shape, uh, but training camp was good. You know, I, I had, um, I originally was a different opponent that we had scheduled and signed for. Um, but I think last couple of weeks, they had I don't know what exactly what happened. It fell, fell the fight fell off. So they switched it uh to a new opponent. Um but training camp has has been good up getting a lot of yeah. a lot of, got a lot of rounds with with different styles, you know, boxers, uh pressure fighters, soft paws, orthodox. Uh, I would go to different gyms to also get rounds with with newer uh newer fighters, you know, some that I've never sparred with so I can uh, I guess download the, their style so I can just have it, you know. Um, but yeah, training camp, training camp has been training camp has been good. It's pretty much towards the end, and uh, now it's just uh, easy recover and weight loss, and that's it. Or yeah. weight cut, not weight loss. Just a quick question on a former sparring partner of yours. Um, there's rumors that Logan Paul is going to be making a return to boxing or influencer boxing. I just wondered what were those spars like, and what do you think? To Logan in general, I didn't even know he was fighting again. I thought I thought he was just I thought he was just doing WWE now. No, uh, I saw there's some rumors this week from people close to him that he's going to be back in the boxing game. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that's good for him. Um, yeah. So th- that was funny with uh Logan Paul. Um, it was just a random just Wednesday Wednesday afternoon. And one of my friends, Marky, uh, Marky the Cut Man, he hit me up. He called me. It's just random. He's like, hey, George, what are you doing? And I'm like, uh, nothing. Why? What's up? He's like, you want to spar Logan Paul? And I'm <laughs> like, uh, sure. And I was, I had no fight scheduled. I was out of training camp. I, I, had, no, I had nothing planned, you know. Uh, I was still in the gym, but I, was, it wasn't, uh, I wasn't in training camp. And I'm like, sure, when? He's like, right now in a couple of hours. And I'm like, <laughs> They wear he's he's like oh he's coming to Whittier and I'm like okay then let's do it so I went to go spar him and this is when he was getting ready for the Mayweather fight yeah 
So I'm going to go spar him. And I think we only spar like five rounds, I think, the first first time. So we only sparred five rounds. And, and it wasn't like they seeked me out. Um, it was more like, hey, we need, we just need someone to spar with. And yeah. then after after they, they moved around, after we sparred, um, they hit me up like, hey, we, we want you to like, we want to keep working with you. Um, only because, you know, when he was getting ready for Mayweather, I definitely don't have a Mayweather style at all. Yeah. Um, we're about the same, we're about the same size, you know, 5'8", give or take. Um, at that time, I was probably like 150 you know 152 or something um so yeah they i were uh i probably had a good what five or six sparring sessions with him um and you know what look i know he's a, a youtuber and and he does a bunch of other business things and he's not a boxer but he's an athlete you know uh, i gotta give him credit i gotta give him credit he, he's an athlete and um you know when you have when you have a bunch of money and you're able to afford high high level trainers uh you're going to you're going to have a pretty steep learning curve so he was able to to get familiar with the boxing game um understand the sport and he, yeah i think he had a pretty good he had a pretty solid boxing knowledge um and yeah the, the, those were uh, those were interesting sparring sessions I mean, he would probably, he would probably do like what four or five rounds with me, and then after, he would do another like two or three rounds with with someone else, um, and just to get get a mixture of things. But yeah, it, it was cool. Yeah, but yeah, I was just wondering because the thing is, you've sparred some top guys like Jamal Perrin, Lee Selby, to name a few. Obviously, he's not at the top; he's not at that level. But I was just wondering, at the, at the time when you sparred him, where did he rank? Like, was it competitive in this in the ring? uh when it comes to skill wise uh no uh <laughs> you know when, when it comes to skill wise i want to say he was competitive but he was just a lot bigger you know you know i'm let's say i was walking around 150 pounds at that time he was probably walking around 210 pounds you know so yeah. you know 210 pounds i'm 58 he was probably like you know a, a good 6 you know five six inches taller than me he's like six something um so he definitely had like a size advantage which uh get, it would it would make things a little difficult on my end right because i mean when am i really ever gonna fight someone who's like six four or six three you know yeah uh, and that size so he i think his best success was when he was trying to box um when he would try to box and just his jab would he would have like an extra two two feet on his on his jab um so but as far as far as skill wise i mean definitely not near uh the some professional boxers that i that i've sparred with um but he definitely held his own and and to give him credit i did see him spar other fighters there some other amateur fighters and maybe some pros and he definitely gave them work you know he yeah I got I got to give credit to him. He definitely put he he tried hard and he worked hard. Um, yeah. But yeah, talking of true boxers, true boxers that um you would rate um Tank against Garcia. That looks like the fight that's going to be made next. Well, I hope it is anyway. All boxing fans want it. But if you was to pick one, who would you pick in that one? Yeah, that was a, you know, I, off the bat, uh, my first uh, choice would be Tank. Yeah. You know? uh, but then you know you start looking at the the small details and 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 stuff tank does get hit uh he makes himself available to get hit but he's able to kind of sacrifice those punches in order to land a big shot and most of the time he lands it and finishes fights um but the thing is i don't know if you can do that against against ryan because ryan has crazy power too he's fast you know he, he's fast and he's explosive skill wise uh i definitely give tank the edge or not even the edge i give him like clear you know tank getting the victory but this is boxing you know boxing you never really know what can happen so it's definitely a risky fight for for both fighters you know it's a yeah. huge fight um but i think it's it's hard for me to to make a choice but i, I i'm leaning more towards towards tank um 
than Ryan. Ryan, well, both fighters have to really be uh, on their A game the entire fight. Mm. You know, if one one of them slips up, it, it might be maybe the end of the fight. Well, moving on from those, just the last question from me. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, but um, I just wondered what your aims were for the year. So, come the end of twenty twenty three, what has Georgia Costa done? Like, where do you expect to be? Yeah, so my my plans for this year is to 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 be active. You know, I've had the last couple of uh, last couple of years have been kind of uh, I, I haven't been as active. You know, my last two years I only had two fights. You know, either an injury or fights fall off. I had a lot of fights fell off like in the last couple of days leading up to a, a fight. Um, and when you're fighting eight or ten rounds, it's hard to get build replacement fights. You know, especially that close. Um, but my, you know, my goal is to 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 be active, you know, try to get at least four fights this year, um, and I, I wanna I want I want to be ranked, you know, I want I want to make, I want to be a top fifteen, uh, top ten, top fifteen by by the end of this year. I want I want people to, uh, I I need to start start making noise, you know. I want people to start uh, being able to recognize me and and talk about me when they talk about you know top top fifteen, top ten guys in the division. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I've been Lyndon Dixon. He's been George Acosta, and we will see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.